Hey, what's going on, everybody? This is Jeremy Lesniak coming to you with episode 227 of Whistlekick Martial Arts Radio. You're probably noticing some difference in the audio quality. I'll talk about that in a second, but stay tuned because today we're going to talk about, well, here's the title because I can't break it down in a really simple way. We're going to call today's episode When in Rome. Now, if you're new to the show, this is going to be a weird one for you to jump in on, but that's okay. I'm the founder of Whistlekick Sparring Gear and Apparel. I'm also your host on this show, Martial Arts Radio. And here on Martial Arts Radio, we come at you twice a week with a couple different things. On Mondays, we usually bring you an interview. I think we've always brought you an interview on Mondays. And then on Thursdays, we bring you some kind of topic show, maybe me ranting about something, or lately we've rebroadcast a couple episodes from friends of ours that have podcasts on the martial arts. You know, it's kind of a mixed bag and it allows us to get into some some topics and have a little bit of fun. If you're not aware of the stuff that we make, I would encourage you to check out whistlekick.com. That's where you can find everything about our gear and our our apparel and all of the other side projects that we do. It is 100% focused on the traditional martial arts and the traditional martial artist. We're just trying to bring you the stuff that we think you want. Honestly, the stuff that I want, because I am a traditional martial artist, and we are building this company around the traditional martial arts. Now, what do I mean when I say, when in Rome? You've probably heard that saying. It's a bit of a cliche. Honestly, I don't know the history of it, but the full quote line is, when in Rome, do as the Romans do. And the idea is that when you're in a spot, when you're perhaps hanging out with people, do things the way that they would do them. And that's for a few reasons. First, it's respect, and it's for the possibility that you might learn something. And it's a saying that I wish we took more to heart in the martial arts. When in Rome, do as the Romans do. When you are hanging out in somebody else's martial arts spot, whether that's their school, or maybe you're visiting a tournament circuit, and that's what we're gonna talk about today, tournaments, be open-minded. Assume that you don't know anything. Be willing to learn. And most importantly, don't assert your own ego at the expense of someone else's uh, respect that, that they deserve. Because everyone deserves respect, right? I think so. I think that's pretty important. Somebody's gotta start the respect. And at worst case, somebody has to keep it going. So why am I talking about this? The reason the noise might be coming through, you could probably hear me driving. I'm in the Kickmobile. Some of you know that vehicle. Some of you have seen pictures of that vehicle. Well, I'm frequently traveling around New England and honestly outside New England quite a bit, most of the Northeast, attending events. Sometimes the whistle kick booth is set up. Sometimes I'm in a chair refereeing. Sometimes I'm attending seminars or teaching things. And I just like to travel around. It's one of the best parts about running Whistlekick is I get to call this work when really it's not, it's a lot of fun. But I am on the way back to headquarters, AKA home in Vermont from an event out of state. And it went great. Everybody had a wonderful time. It's a new event, but put on by a veteran promoter, a friend of mine, and it was a lot of fun. Everybody seemed to have a good time, but There was one issue that popped up. There was a gentleman who was running a ring. He was the head referee in one of these divisions, or rather one of these competition rings. And he assumed that his way was the best way, the only way. And unfortunately, it was counter to what the tournament promoter wanted. Now this gentleman had decades of experience and deserved some respect, but let's be honest, he was there to serve the wider community, the folks that were there to compete. And the promoter had a vision for his event. Now, unfortunately, we're not at a place where tournament referees are paid generally, but hopefully we'll get there at some point. And at the very least, if you're gonna step in, if you're gonna put on a bib or a shirt or your martial arts uniform and sit yourself in a chair and referee, you owe it to the attendees, and the spectators, and most importantly, as far as I'm concerned, the promoter and their staff to maintain their vision. 
because you don't know the other moving parts. You're one person. You're one person in a ring. And to know everything that's going on, that's really, that's one person. That's the promoter. That's the person overseeing the event. Maybe it's an arbitrator if it's not the promoter. But the point is, this gentleman totally threw out what was asked of him because he felt he was entitled to do that because of his experience. And because of that, some things didn't go right. They were rectified, but there were some unhappy people, some some sad children, uh, some confused parents, some grumpy other people. We don't have to talk about the why or the specifics, really. It doesn't matter. But the point is, this guy, it wasn't his spot. He wasn't in his Rome. He was visiting. He was an outsider. And his arrogance because unfortunately this didn't come from ignorance. I heard enough stuff that this was conscious. He decided that he knew better. And in the end, he didn't. And what he did had an impact, a negative impact on others. So what's the lesson to learn here? The lesson, because I hope that every time I get on the microphone and I talk to you all, that there's some benefit that comes from it. Hopefully at the very least it's entertaining, but more importantly, I hope that I make you think. I hope that you consider the words that I'm saying and it makes you consider how you could be better as a human being, as a martial artist, because that's really, as far as I'm concerned, the goal of being a martial artist is to become a better person. Visiting someone, whether it's in a martial arts context or not, take note of what they're doing. Operate the way they are. If you're in their home and they flush the toilet every time they use the bathroom, you should flush the toilet every time they use the bathroom. If they don't, you should not. Maybe not the most politically correct or classy example, but it's one that I see happen all the time. Oh, people are so stuck to those habits. It is a respect thing. And if people are doing things differently than you, try to find a respectful way to find out why. Hey, you know, I might be wrong, but I see that you're doing this and I do that. I would love to know why you do it differently than I do. Would you be willing to share that with me? Educate me. Most people are going to oblige. Be willing to learn. Be willing to open yourself up. And even if you completely disagree, if it's not your spot, swallow your pride or be willing to let things fall a little bit and honor the wishes of the people that you're around. That's all for today. I want to thank you for listening. This is probably a short one. I don't know. I wasn't even looking at a clock. I just figured I would ramble. Hopefully the audio quality is decent. I'm about to pull off the highway and get some fuel because I'm still a long way from home. <laughs> I hope you all have a great day, a great week great weekend. Whenever you're listening to this, whatever it is, I hope you're having a good time. If you want to check out what we've got going on, whistlekick.com. If you want the show notes to this or any other episode, that's whistlekickmartialartsradio.com. I'd love to hear from you. Why don't you go ahead, email me, jeremy at whistlekick.com, or you can find us on social media. We are at whistlekick in every spot that you could possibly imagine. Thanks for tuning in today. Until next time, train hard, smile, and have a great day.